What is Spirit of the Game? It's knowing the rules and when they apply. It's avoiding body contact wherever possible. It's keeping a positive attitude and enjoying the sport. It's being fair-minded even when the game is on the line. It's communicating respectfully with your opponent. Okay, Aiden, winning the toss, picking D. D. What's the, what's the thought behind that? Uh, just to get the legs moving early in the game, come out and hopefully get a break, and then get the ascendancy early. All right, how you've gone earlier in today? Uh, we had a, a match that we lost fairly convincingly this morning, and then um, followed that by a loss by one point uh, just previously. All right, well, good luck for the game and good luck for the tournament. We'll see you soon. Thank you. So, Callum, good. what's with picking the end? Oh, it's, um, the wind's been swirly all day, so I'm hoping that we can get something that will make us play oh, upwind at the start. We really like chipping it around in the upwind, and it means it will come out defence downwind in the second half, which will really okay, let us So well, well planned for you, boys. Yeah, yeah, it's a win-win for us. How's, how's it been earlier today? Good, good. We've played one game so far, had a bye first, then just stuck it to Hoss after the second game. It was a real tight one. They played really well, but we managed to just come out. All right, well, good luck for the game. Thank you for your sure. time, Thanks and so good luck for the tournament. Thank you. So we'll throw to a quick break and we'll come back with your commentators for the match, Simon Talbot and Chantel Jones. Ultimate is a non-contact team sport with seven aside on the field and played with a flying disc. The field is 100 metres long, including 18 metre end zones and is 37 metres wide. A goal is scored by completing a pass in the end zone. Ultimate is self-refereed. Players are responsible for upholding the rules and for resolving fouls and violations themselves. Each point starts with a pull. Teams line up in opposing end zones and the defensive team will throw to the offensive team to start play. After every goal, teams swap ends. The team that scored starts the next point on defense. The disc is moved around the field by throwing it to teammates. Once players have the disc, they set a pivot foot like netball or basketball and can't move from there. Players have 10 seconds to throw the disc. This is counted out loud by the closest defender. An incomplete pass is a turnover, no matter who touched it last. When a foul or violation call is made, players will discuss whether they agree on what happened. If they agree, the call is uncontested and the fouled player retains possession. If they don't agree, the call is contested and play resets to where the last completed pass was. If a player anticipates a collision with another player, they can call pick to pause the play. If the pause didn't affect the outcome of a throw, play resumes. If it did affect the outcome, play resets to the last completed path. First to 15 goals wins the game. If the game clock reaches 100 minutes, time cap is called and the score target is reduced to one more than the current winning score. For example, if the score at time cap is 12-10, the new target score is 13. You can't run the clock down. Teams have to score the last goal to win the game. And welcome back, game number four of day one of the Australian Ultimate Championship. Simon Tolbert here with Chantel Jones. G'day, welcome back everyone. This game here in the men's, the open division, we've got Fishwick United, the local team, playing out of Canberra in the black jerseys, and Crank from Wollongong in the red. Players to watch for on Crank. 
Number zero, Tim Booth, a veteran of the lineup. Uh, Jonathan Keyes, number 19, one of the young leaders of the team. Excellent thrower. And also uh, Kobe Ryan, number 11, one of their tall receivers. Um, hopefully should be getting a few defensive blocks for them too. Chantel, who's the place to look for on Fishwick? Nice. We have a lot of baller players out here. I want to take props to Andrew Jackson, veteran of the team. Uh, we also have Kwong Yang, who's recently moved back to Canberra. It's great to see him on the side. And I want to have a shout out to Alex Young, who is one of the younger players. Um, skills through and through. And obviously with teams playing multiple games at these championships, on, Crank have had all, <laughs> almost a less than 10 minute break from their last game. A heartbreaking sudden death loss. They have to back it up into their next game straight away. They're going to be in the war. So the first pull goes up. They're going to be hungry for it. Trong. We'll control a lot of the offense. Likes to, likes to play a lot of small ball. That's sort of one through Crank running a bit of his own look to Hollander. Short chap moving. There's still a bit of wind uh, left over from last game. Going from left to right. They're very much playing a short game so far. Alex Smith on the sideline. Great little inside shot to Trong, but can't keep it off the ground. Quick turn over there with some first. long runs. No shot, though. Booth sends a long shot up looking for Kobe Ryan, who eats that up effortlessly. Sorry, that's Jack Gray. He pops it up. Ooh. And... Crank, draw first blood. I said they'd be hungry for it, and they've come out and they've had, had a big bite. Not a great start for the, the local team, the Canberrans, uh, giving up the first point to Crank. You can see here on the replay, nice power position. Up it goes. That's Matt Labus. Lots of separation. So Taking Jack his time to pop a... Nice floaty grab. It was Matt Lavis with the gold here and he's down having to get get his uh, calf cramps attended to. It's going to be somewhat of a war of attrition this game, Chantel, mm. with uh, teams crank having to play their third game for the day and it becomes about physical and mental survival on yes. top of uh, getting the disc to the end zone. This is where the endurance training comes out to play. Daniel Clanton on the sideline with us again. Hi, Simon. Yeah, Crank have a lot in common with Newcastle. They tend to play with really short lines. Uh, not many players on their team list, and mm. maybe those cramps, sign of things to come. Yeah, one of the smaller squads here at the championships. Booth lines up the pool, sends it out over our commentary position, but drifting back in field. Gill to Helix Smith to Francis. Another zone look again. A couple of players playing in very tight defense against the throwers. Shot through to Foreman. It's a 1 2, gained some good yards. Kid on the sideline now, Trong. Cramming it up the side there. Yep, Can they complete it? Nice swing. Bounces out against the force. They've really opened up their end zone options now. A Beautiful. nice, easy as you like. Very, very quick movement of the disc there. Quick and steady, Chantel. Yes, Bill Foreman is no stranger to the end zone. He loves to score. He's good at it. We didn't, uh, we didn't see many opportunities for Crank to put on a proper stall count or really sort of lock down on the thrower just then. And the more you can keep the defense moving and unsettled, the greater your options are going to be. As we see that, I think it was Matthew Spados there who. Wasn't looking in the end zone at all, just wanted to bounce it away. And then one, two, three passes. To build that quick change of direction. Yeah, covered about 30 metres of lateral territory with those three passes for a relatively easy goal in the end for Foreman. But will those goals continue to come easy? One all. Nice steady start for both teams. Got that first whistle up there for the pool. So the game advises a timing duration between points. The offensive team have 60 seconds from when the last goal is caught to put their hand up and signal that they're ready. And then 
The defense have 75 seconds. Lots of hang time on that pool. They're going to have nice early pressure on this one. Aiden Norris with that first pass into Ferguson. Hey, but it's just to take their time. Keys. Fishwick defense is looking a little bit zony. Yeah, they're just giving up those lateral passes, but Ryan and Keys, a nice little one-two. Good gainer down the sideline there. Trotty Van. Irish in centre field now. They're about halfway to goal. Fishwick can switch to a match defence. Free play on there, Aiden McCabe. Not moving forward very quickly, very patiently hanging out the back. Ryan. Oh, nice over the shoulder shot. Really sort of crept up there. Just going, happy to gain a couple of metres on each pass and just those extra bonus ones when they can. Really on the doorstep now, Ferguson. Goes wide to Ryan, who's not quite in the end zone, and goes short looking for John O'Keys. And good clinical offence. They're really Very just... Very patient. Treasuring possession. They're not going to... They're not going to take many risky shots. They're not going to try and throw through the defence much, are they? Mm. Fishwick boys love to get on their belly, love to have a layout, so it's definitely smart to play clinical. Anyone's, every disc in the air is one they can catch, so safe is great. Wollongong being a coastal town, no strangers to the windy conditions. That's They're true. just as comfortable in these conditions as still, so we shouldn't see their throwing affected too much by these conditions. Played in some crazy winds in Wollongong. <laughs> So much that we always had to postpone our final. All gone notorious for putting up very windy conditions for events held there. Just like most games of today, we've got a bit of a crosswind uh, coming from behind the commentating tank tent, uh, kind of towards down to where Crank are now. Yeah, sort of bottom left to top right, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit swirly as well, tiny bit unpredictable. An experienced thrower should be able to slice through it, yeah, and it might trip some new players up. It's enough, enough to be annoying. <laughs> mm. Yes. Correct to start on defense again. Again, they've put that pull Ooh. out and it's landed out of bounds. That is not good. Have we had a brick called or a sideline? No, sideline. So it'll be taken from where the disc left the field Ooh. of play all the way up. They'll have about 20 meters to gain. Game advisor Steve Baker indicating where the disc will come in with Rob DeHollander to start on the sideline. So this should be a, you know, one or two pass score here, you'd think. DeHollander is looking towards the middle of Tron. Gets that gainer, he's right on the doorstep now. No short options available, so looking lateral. Gets it out, and Helic Smith having to go low. Tronk's doing the work at the front of the stack there. Bounces it back, just keeps the keeps the store count nice and low. There we go, Ooh, puts floating. the big around shot out there now. Sam Shalai with the disc. Good inside nice. shot. To finish off that goal. Very clinical, clean. Mm. That so, last pass. Yeah, again, we saw them last time they were shooting towards that then. A lot of lateral movement. They weren't, even though they're only two or three metres from the goal line, they were... Can, they weren't really looking to try and punch it in because Crank really had that area covered. Daniel, what have you seen? Well, it's been you know 18 months since we've seen most people. I'm noticing Rob De Hollander out there, mammoth ex-player. He is looking fast and lean. It is a scary, scary thing when that man is in shape, and it looks like he has come in in possibly the best shape of the, his his recent career, anyway. Of course, Mammoth, the team out of Brisbane, the defending 2019 Open Division champions, but unfortunately weren't able to make it here due to recent rule changes in Queensland. It was the, it was the day that the decision needed to be made. Yes, we're sending our love to our Queensland yeah. family up there. Thinking of you, hoping you're watching. We miss them here, and uh, I think Mammoth will take the opportunity to claim themselves as rightful champions, Ooh. given they <laughs> haven't been here to defend it. 
I think that's pretty fair, to be honest. We'll have a title reunification match in uh, 2022. Looking forward to that one. <laughs> That'll be good. We've got Mile, Mile putting out the disc. Mile Hingy returning to Fishwick from a long, long absence. He's been travelling around playing with other clubs, but he's back with his original club. He's been playing for Ikigai Ultimate lately, my home club. Keys through the middle for Ryan. Oh, straight Ryan to puts the grass. it low to Ferguson, but just out of his reach. Opportunity here for Fixwick to get one back. Nice easy pass to Hodson, all on his own on the near sideline. About five from goal. Sandberg, Sandbridge, sorry. Again, they're working out to that high side, and those low throws not quite working upwind. They're too, kept too low. Key shoots early, but straight, in, straight into the lap of Hingy, and straight Ooh. away he goes to Sandbridge. Uh, Sandbridge likes to be referred to as the songbird of Fishwick Ultimate. <laughs> bit of a character, bit of a legend. Lovely bloke. Definitely got off the ground to uh, get two hands to that catch and make sure of it. The cynical among us may suggest that that was not necessary and the uh, the fact that we are live today on KO Sports may have influenced that Oof. play. Maybe, it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me. But nothing like a pejorative layup. Yep, but if you're going to do that, you've got to make sure of it. And that he did. There he goes. Didn't Firm need to get He had it in his hand before he needed to get off the ground. <laughs> Had some quality play in the middle there from Alex Young and Nick Hodson. They've been playing together for years, coming up through the youth stream. Of course, a huge youth ultimate scene here in Canberra. There is, and it's still growing, so get your kids involved. 3-2 <laughs> to Fishwick. They've regained the lead after Crank got that early, got early defensive break. They're on hometown turf. Many of them have trained on this field over the last year. Many of them play league here. Very familiar with the conditions. Should use it to their advantage. That's your whistle signaling that offense has to be ready. Lady pull from Nick Hodson. Yep. Roller. Keys feels it swiftly to Ferguson. How many cuts coming towards him? And that's a big layout <laughs> bid there from Sandbridge. Getting off his feet again. Maybe you need to lay out for that one. <laughs> we have to bring it back in. Pin on the sideline, near goal, Young. Nice little upline gainer. The Mambo recess. trying to move free. The Reese is playing in very close and big wide throw to no one in particular and Irish collects the easy intercept. Ferguson. Kwong on the mark, a very agile man. Ryan looking back to Keyes. Ryan and Keyes are We've uh, played a lot of ultimate together, so I like to sort of look at look to each other for connections. Okay. Floats it out to McCabe's advantage. It's a great throw. It sends the big backhand up. And Ooh. it's over everyone. And caught. He's caught it? Yep. Oh, kidding. Nope. <laughs> that was amazing. Over four players and in for the dive. Give it up Check on that, that play. out on the highlight. And he's hit the ground hard too. I think that's Kobe Ryan who came down with it. Over the head of Alex Young and Alex Pantany Vran. And Alex did a great job with the box out. Everyone give it up on and that. Then, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an Very amazing nice. catch. Nothing like being the backup to the backup and scoring. So I think that's Jack Gray was from Crank who's come down with that one. And he's uh, a... <laughs> Very commendable Kobe, effort. Uh, Kobe Ryan who got it. And... He uh, took his time getting up off the ground. <laughs> it's going to be an exhausting uh, exhausting sport, this one. But We're three for three. But yeah, last... It's amazing how last just ditch efforts by that can make such a difference. Everyone had given up on that, thinking that's just going to be a turnover. turnover. But he's turned that opportunity into a goal. It's great to see everyone backing each other up as well. And an upwind goal too, that's keeping Crank well in touch. So they're going to pull downwind now. See if Fishwick can get the upwind goal. Booth is going for the forehand pull and that's a drop midfield. Fielded by De Hollander. Bit of a fumble but he gets it moving. 
Got a bit of a zony defense. Great first pass to Francis. Francis pointing at his teammates, telling him where they should be. Svados can't get any lower than the grass. Booth. Nice easy throw to Shell out on the mark there. Love the foot block. Can he get it? No. Gray to Lavis. Some nice switch defense by Fishwick there. Everyone's on their toes. Lavis and Booth. Booth likes to really control the offense and play. It's a very close reset. He's good at getting open in those close quarters. Armas. Pops it up Ooh, over the top up in into the a bit of traffic. Ooh. and <laughs> Comes down with it. Has he? I think it's hit the ground. We're going to have a bit of a discussion here because uh, from back here, it did look like Jack Gray did have, have a hand on that, and he has called the foul, but he's got three Fishwick players around him. So he's going to have Steve a chat. Steve in there to see what we can, what we can have hear. Have a look at the replay. It looked... Has it? Knocked it. Ooh, we had fingertips on it, but did he have control of it? Let's listen in. Are we? Can we ask you? Yeah. No. I don't think it's going to be that. But we are allowed to ask you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Can we have a it, it, was a, it was a mess. Yeah. So, in disagreement? Yes. Yeah. Holly, did you get a good look at it? No, entirely. Okay. My, my view was a little bit obstructed, but it looked like you had a clear jump and there was a collision, I think, after that. Yeah. Uh, whether that affected your catch or not, I can't tell. I feel like I didn't collide with you. And I got a piece of the disc, and that pushed it out of your reach. Oh, it, but, it yeah. was in my hand, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just giving my yeah. perspective on what happened for me. Yeah. So, this definitely sounds like it takes 30 seconds, eh? Right? Yep. yep. What do you want to do? How about you send it back, guys? Yeah, send it back. Contested. Yep. Thanks, guys. Good job. So, That's clear communication out there. Yeah. Contested oh, foul call in the end, so can't agree on what happened. Like, to me, it looks like. It was a foul, so not a strip, but a foul, because mm. it looks like the, con the contact... Uh, Sam was also off the ground quite early. Yeah. It's hard to tell. So Booth to reset, Upton. Lavis, back to Booth. And, and nice clear catch that time, Jack Gray. The same uh, called the dis never lies. <laughs> Maybe this applies. <laughs> yep. A little bit of karma there, could we, could we say, but much cleaner catch there for Jack Gray. And it was that... Quick lateral movement to this side of the field and back just to make Fishwick's defence mm. move out of their comfort zone. And as they move back towards that high side, Gray's just off the mark pace really got there. Daniel, what have you seen? Well, I'm down here on the sideline and the atmosphere in this game, there's a bit of a charge to it. I can tell both of these teams, there's a bit of an edge to this game. You noticed after that spirit conversation, no high fives there and no love lost between these two teams. I think this is great. And this game is shaping up to be an absolute cracker. Thanks, Daniel. You're totally right. <laughs> and I felt like, to me, we're a long way away, Chantel, but it, and we've got the benefit of replay, which the players we don't do. have. But it did, it did look like, like Gray, he had fingertips on it. I don't think mm. he had control of it. Mm. But the contact did make him drop it, I think. Did make this fall down. So, well, I think he's right to call a foul, but... If they can't agree on the outcome, then... Send it back. Send it, it's the send whole it. reason why we got the contest. Yeah, sending it back to the last completed pass. How about Puller the right out outcome. there with a cast on his arm? Yep, Tim Booth playing with a broken wrist. Right-handed player? Yep. Left-handed wrist? He's broken? Going to have to be right-handed if he wants. <laughs> Beauty of being a non-contact sport. <laughs> play, play with a couple of injuries. Push through. Alex Smith and Trong to control the... Tempo of the offense again, Malcolm Gill on the high side. He wants that flick. Dishy instead. Not much happening towards this. They're really mm. just using these four players to really advance it. Before we get a shot downfield, there we go. Foreman, Foreman. now. Looking to reset to Tronk, but he's getting covered well by Sam Armas. Good shot. Oh, and nearly saved. Slip over and Quick turnaround. Straight to the hands of the waiting crank player there. I think that was Ferguson. Oh, sorry, that was Maguire who came up with it. And just as quick, there's a turn the other way. So Fish would get a second crack at offense, heading to the, the right of screen, the downwind direction. Moved from a junk more to a match by Crank. Mm, crank really 
Fishwick have pulled all their cutters out. They're going to isolate Foreman out in a one-on-one -on -one battle with Booth. Cup player's gone long, but Trong's not looking long. He wants middle of the field. Foreman obliges. Start us now. Back to Foreman. Not much action happening from the stack. They're really just going one at a time just to try and limit the traffic downfield. Oh. Nice breakthrough. Spartus in board. Too. Shell out in the middle. Yeah, Jack. Yes, Jack. Smith didn't like the look of uh, Mitchell's offering there. They've dropped a little bit of yardage. The stack hasn't quite responded yet, but that's not going to trouble these throws too much. Alex Smith gets a forward movement, but in the meantime, there was a pick within the stack. So the disc will stay with Helly Smith. The mark is also giving them the flick throw, yep. um, but there's nothing coming on this side from the stack. Mm. We'll see if that has a change. There we go. <laughs> Better tidy cut from Mitchell this time. Just to move it back towards the centre of the field. Helen Smith, Tronk. Franco really holding out. There we go. Finally yeah, gets close. to the side of the end zone he's looking at. And Foreman with his second goal. Unsurprisingly. It's interesting that Fishwick just aren't, look, aren't looking at all at that near side of the sideline. They really mm. always want to try and take that shot to the high side. What do you think that might be? Oh, that's a really good question. We are playing in a crosswind, so that could be a part of it, but it would be very advantageous if they did get it on this side so that they could use the width of the field and score across on the far side. Um, maybe they're just playing it a little bit safe. Mm. I, mean, Craig, I think Crank sort of have a decision to make. They can't cover the whole field, mm. so I think they want to try and tempt them to throw over the top where it yeah. might be caught by the wind. And so we're really guarding this near half of the end zone and just daring Fishwick to take those shots, but... They're not taking them. No, if they work hard to hit those around, get around the marker, and as we've seen a couple of times now, just that quick sequence of two or three passes to head 30 minutes laterally, and it gives them a nice clean shot. We've been trading for a couple of points in a row now. Look at those future ultimate players on the sideline there. So four all. Just ticked over the 24-minute mark of the game. Hodson with the pull. Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Lovely. Great hang time. Put it Irish. out to dry. Ferguson. He's got right. Oh. He's got three defenders going with him, but he's got the body advantage here. Right has to go early. Up he goes. Oh. What a catch! Beautiful. Over the top of three, three defenders. Says to his teammates, look at me. Get around me. That's one of the first long shots we've had of the game. That was a fantastic catch. He had three on one. Pulls it out of the air. Up that it was goes. a nice clean throw. It had to be straight he down the middle early. of the field. Good positioning. Yep. Great positioning. Yeah, was there first and so was able to pick his, pick his moment, pick his launch time. He's got to be happy with that. Oh. It's a beautiful throw too. As a receiver, that's what you dream of. Maybe not so much three defenders on you, but <laughs> makes yeah, it look Fishwick, a lot better. Fishwick defenders frustrated, but no, they just mm. got outdone. So, and that's the. Uh, we, do you think we might see a bit more of that quick scoring heading mm. left to right? We've uh, seen so far teams have to really be patient to work their way to that downwind side. But crank with a five-four lead. It's not unheard of for Fishwick to play a long game. We'll see if they pull it out of their pocket today. Right, with a great pull, it's heading to the high side. And Almost out. In. Oh, that'll get fielded in to Hollander. Straight across to Svados. Easy to to Hollander. Strong oh, busts down. through, but just... Right in Foreman's feet. Booth. Jack Gray pumps that forehand shot, and it's fallen short. Saves it with the body. That's uh, I think Jake Upton back there who's taken that in. That's two quick ones in a row to Crank. Crank has scored at least two out of their five goals from the ground. 
for a tall team. Interesting. So we see again, it was uh, Jack Gray just had that, yeah, a nice Massive. clear shot. I think Helig Smith was just uh, baiting too much on that mm. short throw and <laughs> lost his footing, but still managed to get two hands around the edge of the disc to take it in cleanly. Fishwick defenders are, they get there, they just don't get there quick enough. Yeah. As you can see here, it's two of them just trailing. A bit more anticipation. So a timeout's been called. Uh, I would say that the Fishwick coach John Horan probably called that one. Just when you give up two quick goals, you don't want uh, the you don't want the opposition to feed off the energy of that. You, yeah, you, you want to prevent a run. Call the timeout to sort of ice them a bit and it's also good to reset your own team's mentality. Make sure you're coming out with the right attitude, the right level of, of flow, not being too hyped and not being underhyped. Yeah, but you're right. Yeah, seven offensive players. It's also good to give them a rest. They've just been on the field a couple of times. and So they'll probably put out the same offense team again. I reckon uh, Warren will back them into some, so one more opportunity. It looks like that's happening with seven offensive players. You're not wrong. Jogging to the line, but if they, yeah, if they cough up another one, they'll definitely uh, get a little bit of bench time. Just have a think about what they've done. Meanwhile, Crank, I think the theme of their timeout will be just to keep this, keep this same energy going. I think they're keep the ball rolling. And en nearly entering their third hour of <laughs> ultimate for the afternoon, and. Um, Fatigue is definitely going to be a factor for them later on. We just have to see if they can hold this lead. I think that they're a team that can really dig their heels in and mm. really slow the pace of the game down, turning into a grind. But they want to be comfortable on the scoreboard before they think about that. So they're really throwing the challenge down to Fishwick now to say, come at us now. Or yeah. They seem to be really evenly matched skill-wise. Um, this might come down to who wants it more. Who's got more grit? Real arm wrestle of a contest. Mm. Booth to pull. This will be a forehand. He'll have to just... wonder how he'd go in an arm wrestle with that cast. <laughs> one hand, one bounce kind of catch there. Nice clean pick up and that gets the offense started. Well, Alex Smith. Still looking very short. Playing a very short game. Francis. De Chong. Oh. Shellard. Close nice there with catch. the D. And a lot of heat puts it up the line to Kyle Mitchell. That's a great game there. They're about two metres from the end zone now, but again, like we've seen, they'll look to move it back to the middle of the field, but Trong has absolutely nice. lost his defender. And strolls into the front corner for the easy score. Speedy up the line. Yeah. A very quick handler. Yeah, I think the defender there made an assumption that they would definitely take that around option. Mm. And Trom just doubled back the other way and Work smarter, not caught harder. him lost. Yeah. Very advantageous, opportunistic play there. You see, we'll see it here again. Great that he's Bang. disappeared off the screen. And Bam, out of nowhere, catches it. Yeah. Beautiful. Kyle Mitchell just had the easiest of easy soft touch throws. Turns out that timeout might have been worth it. Reset, jump back on, get on the board. Daniel on the far sideline now. He's over there with a few of the players. What's he What's he seen? Yeah, I just had a quick chat with Andrew Jackson from Fishwick. He is injured currently. He uh, rolled his ankle two weeks ago, and he's no good. So he won't be joining the team this tournament. I asked him what's happening out there. He said we need to work harder. We need to stop putting so much pressure on our handlers and start to do more downfield. That is big news. Andrew Jackson, the captain of the team. One of those players we were meant to look out for. Yeah. He'll be very knowledgeable from the sideline, no doubt. Still a very powerful force on the team, regardless if he's on the field or not. Oh, Hingy with the pull, putting him right back on the end zone line. So good early defensive pressure, Ferguson. Got some intensity Irish. on the sideline here. Maguire, very experienced head on this team. Sorry, that's Nichols. Clean catch by Keys there. Sends the throw into traffic, but McCabe cuts it off before it becomes trouble. Gray. 
Not much happening ahead of him. He's scanning around for a teammate on the move. Very, very clever throw to open up Ferguson. It's a quick one too. He's looking towards the high side of the field. He's got Keys and Weir one on one. What a battle that is. Irish. Great fake. <laughs> Moves the defender out of the way. Sends it back across to Nichols. Not much happening upfield, so it looks back to Pensu Van. Doesn't like what he's offering, so puts it up. Anyone's it's going to be a game. jump ball. Numbers underneath it. Who wants it more? <laughs> that's a great. That's an enormous block by Sandbridge. Again, leaving his feet. Miles sending it down the sideline. It's not coming. Hudson. No mark, so got heaps of time with Manus. Mile in the middle. The He's got legs for days. Man can run all day. Hodson sends the shot up. Big Again, float. this is going to be a float. Let's get some numbers underneath it. But Philip Swan's got the advantage. Yeah. and He's uh, had a very clean swipe at that, but only gets fingertips to it. Doesn't secure the catch. Starting to become a little bit of a longer point. That was good by Jaden Ferguson just to run sort of underneath yeah, it. Yeah, great force, positioning. Yeah, force Swan to have to jump early. I think Swan would have been content just with the, uh, the clap catch in the lap. Mm. But not to be. So, Jonathan Keyes. Multi-time junior Australian rep. We've got a horizontal here by Crank. That's where the offense sets up across the field rather than in a stack in the middle. Everyone's cut away from him and he's Down gone to... Down on the grass. Quick turnover. Looks at the ankles of James Nichols, McManus and we are keep it moving quickly. Hingy. We find Sandbridge again for Sandbridge's... I think that's his third goal now. Second or third. Definitely and had two on the board. Doesn't he like that one? And Fisher can either pull one back to 6-5. I think that timeout may have uh, may have woken them into action. Mm. They've come out with two goals since then. Six all, sorry. They've come out with two goals since that timeout. To bring it back to level pegging, but Crank's still with a slight advantage, having the uh, opportunity to play this point on offense. They've also got the downwind, mm. which will be in their favor. Yep. To be an uphill battle for Fishwick to score. See if they can do it. Yeah, putting a lot of tall timber on this line, so you'd think that this uh you think that this throw, this offensive points might be sent down to the right hand side in very quick motion. We can see Fishwick United coach John Horan there. Do you think that we might have a set play coming on? Wouldn't be surprised. I think it'll depend largely on where the pull lands. I think if it puts them, if it gets far enough up to pin them back where they are, we'll see a set play. But I think if it lands short, because the breeze has picked up, they'll run with it. I think we'll, no, I think we'll just see them walk to it and take their time. So Bill Foreman, big wind up. Oh, geez, let's put some distance on this. So Irish to field it. We'll get it moving quickly. Ferguson going with a side stack. With yeah. one ISO. They've set up a yeah, cave long shot. He's just put his head down and run, and he's turned to look at the disc, and he can't find where it went. So I've ended up with the turnover, and so it'll be quickly moved by Swan, but no one else is ready for him. Ingy gets him out of trouble. Where? Find Swan looking for the up wing. There's numbers here. There's oh, bodies here. But he's taking the, taking the second grab. And it winds up the backhand, but doesn't like it. So Mambo back to where. Hitting the swing. Callum's outside again. Sandbridge. Yeah, they've slowed it down a bit now. Sandbridge, nice little one too. Puts a big forehand up looking for Foreman. That's going to drop right into his lap. Look at that. Takes a nice, easy catch. That'll be Foreman's third goal. Fourth goal. Third. third. <laughs> Got two scorers on this team. Yeah, so that's been a bit of a shootout in the last few points. That's uh, three in a row from Fisher. Yeah, three of the last, yeah, three in a row since, since that time out. out. Yeah, so definitely that mental reset's done wonders for them now. 
And this time we see a timeout called this time by Crank. So there's a couple of long points in to start the game off, but there's now been some very quick, uh, very quick offense played or, or very quick transitions from defense to offense now. You can hear, see, see and hear some chat from back, from Fishwick talking about some strategy. I was having a look at that throw and I think Foreman spread this perfectly, knew that the wind was going to push it down short, so got that front position ahead of the defender. That's just a little jump for Foreman. Yeah, the boy easy. can get off the ground. <laughs> so the team's really taking the full measure of the two-minute timeouts they're offered. Oren getting very loud and animated, really putting some energy into into his charges. Crank have been playing very clean clinical offense. We'll see if they'll be able to score upwind now. They've only, they've only really turned it over when they've rushed their throws mm -hmm. a bit. They've tried to just throw while still on the move, and when particularly when you're fatigued after a few games, you're being off balance even just a little yep. bit can just really alter the trajectory of your throw. Also, not taking into account the wind, the way yeah. you, you the way you position your hand can definitely affect your throw. Tiredness comes into can be, that. Can be a game of centimetres, also. <laughs> Doesn't take only the slightest of adjustments can be disastrous at times. So. Crank taking their time to be on the line, ready for offence. I have a feeling they're about to put out a zone. Yeah. Crank have their hand up and only a couple seconds remaining for Fishwick to pull this pull up, so they'll have to move quickly before that three whistle indicator. Yep. They want plenty of hang time on this pull to try and get time down, but he's put some blade on just, just to get distance. Comfortably fielded by Keys there, Ferguson. Going for a match. Take yep. it back. Ryan. That's a long shot, but just go short to McCabe. A lot to hype here on the sideline today. Ferguson gets the reset. Ryan really sort of pushing the limits here. He's kept that in bounds. He's done well. Not many options. He has to go backwards to Ferguson. He had to work for it. A pick's being called upfield, so it'll pause play just to avoid the collision. We'll start with Ferguson. You can see in the highlight here, towing it in. Had 10 centimetres to spare. Great job. Yeah. Of course, the rule being it's where your first contact with the ground is once you have the disc secure. Big layout there from Hodson. Yep, and Keyes has called the foul here. There. So you got a bit of a, a bit of a shoulder massage there from Tom McCallum as he's caught that disc, and it was enough to knock him off balance. So he's called the foul for the stoppage. So it's an uncontested foul. An uncontested foul always comes in at one, right? That's zero. Yep, McCallum knew he was guilty, so did <laughs> wasn't to argue at all. Great inside shot there. Hodson to Gray. Really close to it. Ryan. Playing a very tight defense. Immediately looked for Keys. <laughs> Knew he was going to be coming up on his right hand side there and gets it to him. Cross hammer shot overhead. to McCabe. Smart cut by McCabe. Just to pick that space out. Ferguson around to Gray, but that's floated up in the air and up. picked off by Hodson. Not the first straight throw we've seen from Crank, but this time that was marginally too high instead of too low. Weo doesn't like what he sees up field, so they bounce it a couple of times with Yang. Finds Hudson in the middle, winds up that backhand. I think that was just to make sure defence is paying attention. McCallum across to Foreman. Continues to Hudson. Hudson the, doing the work at this point. Based on the coaching from the sideline, it looks like they're, they're looking for an early dump. Wow. 
This is up to Hudson. Hudson urging the uh, race set to go upfield, but they're just playing it safe. They're stuck on that sideline. Kevin moving away Ooh, on his own, but close. doesn't quite land in bounds. Right on the doorstep now. It's forming going to get it again. Nope. Pops Not it up bad. over the top to a young. Alex Young. That's a huge get for Fish Week. They really needed this goal to put, start putting some distance between themselves and Crank. And with that, they've taken the half-time break. Daniel. You might have heard over the mic there, uh, John Horan shouting at Cadence, one, two, engage. What he's calling there is for the throwers to look down for two stall counts and then engage and look for a reset to keep the offense flowing. Yep. Yeah, they really want to try and wear out the crank defense here, mm -hmm. um, knowing that they've got many kilometers under their legs today, so taking full advantage of that. With the halftime break, we're going to take a short break ourselves. We'll be back with the second half soon. See you soon.
Welcome back. We have a pull up from Mile. Mile Hingy. Teams didn't mess around get back on the field after half time. Yeah, they really want it. Right into it. A very strict five minute half. Keys. Finds Ryan. Got a horizontal play again. We've got four handles back at the moment. Nichols. Plenty of cars moving away from him. Not much happening towards him. Keys gives him the reset. Irish. Fishwick happy for the backwards throw. Not too worried. There it is again. Fisher could really clamp down on uh, cuts towards the disc, which is why we're not seeing a lot of upfield throws. You can see the black jerseys standing on the uh, the right side of the screen to the red jerseys, really cutting off those under throws and just happy to give up a potential long throw. Ryan doesn't like what he sees upfield, very close quarters for the reset there. Ferguson gives him the bailout. Cuts have dried up now, the fatigue starting to set in, just even for this point. Forcing a straight up there. Yep. Ferguson on the brick mark. So they're 44 from goal. Haven't had a lot of progress. Hodson with the big bid over Ryan's shoulder, but Ryan takes it cleanly. Keys, big hammer shot again. to McCabe. McCabe just knows where to position for those. It's the second one of those that have paid off. Yep. Wants to move upfield. Looks up for a long time. Precision throw to Ryan. Ryan looks for the big round backhand. Alex he's Young got, there. He's Not got a close enough. Deep cut there from, I think that was uh, Sam Armas there, I think, at the end there. Very close to the back of the end zone there, really stretching it out. Yep. And crank their first goal in some time. Brings it back to 8-7, so it feels like Fishwick have had, really had the run of play for the last, you know, that last sort of 15 minutes before half time, but... Just like that, one goal, and it's back to a one-goal margin. Big pivot out there. Fantastic around throw. Great positioning on offense. It was John O'Keys who left the hands position and went to the end zone. That's that's an all-or-nothing move because if you don't get the throw, you've uh, you've left your position abandoned. Feels good when it happens, though. <laughs> get roasted if it doesn't. Oh yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'd say medium risk, high reward. Have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Fishwick have got their D line out. Yeah, this is a this is a big defensive point for this team now. If they can get an early block and early goal and peg it straight back to eight, all that. That would just, be their O line actually. Just about undoes Fishwick's hard work over the last twenty minutes or so. If it, all it results is an even score. A lot of these players have been playing together for years. Booth. Relying on their connections. The veteran of the team, veteran of the Wollongong scene. He's played with many other clubs. But happy to sort of see out his late career with his hometown crew. Helig Smith battling with the sun out there. <laughs> He's completely lost sight of that disc and he's let it hit the ground. Mitchell. going along. Not up. Svados. Really stretching the defense here, making them have to work just to provide. Even minimum coverage. Gill. Inside shots into Hollander. Keeps going to Trong. Trong back. Oh, oh he hasn't put enough on it. Straight into the lap of Lavis. The intensity out there is next level. Everyone is running hard. Maguire now. He's got a cutter coming straight at him. Unguarded. That's Milo Morrison Jones. Earth of the new player, Lavis, he's got it again. Nothing happening upfield. He finally has someone come at him and he's uh Jack Upton took it took it cleanly, but then Svartos he laid out, collected his legs, and Svartos straight away knows it was a foul. So happy to call it on Upton's behalf. See it there in the replay. Yep. So Jack Upton with the restart. About 40 from goal. There's one look upfield. Straight back to Maguire. Cheeky overhead fake. Booth. Around the sideline. Upton. All of the young players who's come up through the wall I've seen lately. A nice simple reset to Maguire. Maguire puts a long outlandish throw. He's looking for Booth, but... In no wind, that would have been perfect. Reach. Yeah. Just carried away just by a gust of breeze that came along. Come on, 
We've got a bit of a stack happening by Fishwick. One ISO by the looks of it. Mitchell, number 17, he's sending it. Pulled two defenders with him. Alex Smith finds Trong. They seem to be stuck in that back corner. Can they get out? The there they go. The cutters are really still putting in the work just to make the defense have to follow them. The more they can do that, the more they'll wear them out and hopefully beat them with, beat them with running. Beat them with the legs. Meanwhile, they've just got to rely on the throwers just to maintain possession and keep resetting that stall count. They're playing through a lot of their players. Nearly yeah. every, every Fishwick player has nearly got the disc this point. Strong has one look at the end zone. They're probably within shooting range, but boosts it across to Pick Gil. Cold there, that makes, why, makes sense why he was so free. Yeah, so. Are they going to send it back or is he going to catch up? No, I think it's still with Gil. I think Gil was just unguarded and I think the pick happened well before that, so. I think they're agreeing that Gill would have got it regardless. The defender was far enough away that... This is one of the only times where you actually tap the disc in when there's no defensive yeah. player near within three metres. Bryson Jones is done. Playing very easy tight reason. coverage on Trong just to deny them easy resets. So let's push Trong upfield now. And Helix Smith and Gill at the back with him. The whole... It's close. Nice oh, steady catch. That was Labus who had the, another pick call. Just as there's less less field to defend, mm. defense plays in a lot closer together, so there tends to be a lot more uh, a lot more traffic to contend with. Dan Helix Smith, about 20 from goal. Michael Trump gives the nod, runs the set play. There we go. Attempt number three to Hollander. Gains good yards. Hook the air to Shellard. Shellard puts it out. Big layout bid there from the young crank player. That's James Gray. Uh, Jack Gray, sorry. Definitely making a few big plays this game, Gray. And straight. Oh, and <laughs> Tim Boothy didn't have any cutters moving towards him. And he's, he's called the foul. I think there was a bit of contact on the. Uh, on the mark there, but definitely a reprieve from Booth mm. that he's been able to call that stoppage because he had no cutters looking at him. So he flakes a couple of throws to get his defender moving. Got a little bit of upfield movement here. Yep. Very much relying on the short throws and the resets at the moment. We've seen long oh, shots from them before. Maguire's had to really reach for that one. Can't quite get it. And that's got to hurt. That was a that. quick turnaround. Yeah. Coughing it up on your goal line like that, yep. and immediately conceding the goal. That's fairly damaging to the morale, but great for Fishwick. Put Take it out a to a 9-7 lead. So that will give... Fishwick's defense a chance there. We see the great, great bid to try and keep that alive, but just couldn't secure Not it on the close. way down. And then Helix Smith straight to De Hollander for the goal. It's nice when those opportunities just fall mm. in your lap for the for the quick, easy goal. Takes a confident player as well to go and pick it up and go, I'm scoring now. Yeah. It's great to see. Because Chantel, I know you've done a bit of coaching. If, uh, if a I player have. does that but doesn't convert the goal, <laughs> do you remain calm or do you? <laughs> I guess it was in their hands to start with, so I guess you know worse than you were before. Could have been great, I would say, yep. if they missed it, but you never know. So Fishwick's defensive line out now with John Horan giving them final instructions before they go. The two whistles indicating offense has to be ready. Really pushing out that break time. Bit of a lower pull. Yep. Not as high in the air. Irish and Keys get some cheap yards before the defence sets. Still running with their match, but just no cut is happening. But the wind has died down just now. Hammer shot to Pentony Brand. Ferguson, he's having a look upfield. They really want to shoot and plays through it. Foul, Foul called on the throw. Uncontested straight away by, yep. by Hang. 
Ted knew straight away that he collected his arm. A very well-spirited player, if I must say. Yeah. Good chance for off the uh, crank offense just to catch their breath. We'll go again. Irish pushing up field. Bergson doesn't have a look to look at, has to lose yards to Keys. Everyone wants it out there. Everyone's on Keys, their toes. Long, flat forehand. He's looking for Penty Ooh. Brand. He goes big Ooh. and he's got it. He's reeled it in. Just <laughs> in as well. Alex Pentony Brand, the one of the fellow veterans of the team, a long uh, long standing member of the Wollongong mm -hmm. Ultimate Community. <laughs> Still puts the body on the line. That's a work for that it. one. Full stretch. He's uh, he's no short fellow, so two inches shorter. He might not have had that, but Keys just Senior had a high stall count. Just had to take the shot. A couple of jumps for that throw in the midfield to try and knock it down. It's not quite close enough. Yeah, he's didn't get a lot of elevation on the throw. He's just put it low and flat and hoped for the best. And Fortunately, the best worked out in their mm. favour. Crank keep touch. It's 9-8. Got ourselves a game. Yeah. So Crank went through a bit of a scoring drought towards the end of the first half, but mm. they've got two since half time, and I think that's enough for them to just steady the ship as it goes. Just to remind them just what their offense patterns look like. So since half, we'd say Crank are up. It's been 2 1. Yep. Anyone's game. Fish Wicker aiming for another upwind point here. And approaching the one hour mark of the game. And Let's go United! De Honda sees the short pull, wants to get it moving before the defense can get set. So again, some quick yards and shoots a lot. Looking for Bill Foreman. He's going to have to do some work, but Not a Bill bad Foreman, play. the athlete, was able to run that hard and had enough time to look where the end zone was as well. Just to make sure he was catching a goal yeah. and not just a pass. That very much looked like a set play. They yeah. came out with that plan, they executed it. And that was um, that was good heads up play by Rob De Hollander when he saw the, the pull was short. He thought we've got an opportunity here just to get a quick one to and gain some quick yards just so we've before the defense gets set. And yeah, the defense is just left on their heels and Foreman takes advantage. Heads to the end zone and massive separation. If we get that replay again, you can see that Bill almost goes before the throw is even up. Yeah, he would have taken it already right gone now. by now. Yep, and it's hard for Rob De Hollander with his absolute can of a mm. forearm to ignore opportunities like that. Can't say no to that. <laughs> you know, he'll jump and try and bring it down too. Yeah, so they're struck back straight away to make it 10 8. The wind has has died down a lot. We're just no more than a gentle puff of breeze now. So this this could very quickly become just a shootout to see out the game, which is not what Crank want. They need to get themselves a extra defensive break just to bring it back to even. Mm. So they'll be doing well to try and put this in. Hinge up with the pull again. Lots of shape to it. It's going to drift. Very far out to that the high Defense side. getting down there before they've even picked it up. Yeah. It'll be about 40 from goal. Trying to trap them on the sideline there. Irish to McCabe. He's got an under option. And oh, it was good baiting there by Shallard. Shallard to slow down a bit, sort of daring them mm. to make that throw. And then as soon as the throw went up, put the burners on and... Dived out for it. Oh, had to reach to the toes there to catch that one. It's Tom McCallum picking that one up and hits the reset where. Sends it out Shall wide. Is he going to bid? Oh, <laughs> oh he's had to go full stretch. Got fingertips to it. That was a difficult, difficult one to reel in. He did well to make a goal of it. See if they can fight to get it back so again. again. He just he saw he just slowed down a second just to mm. attempt the throw and then. Went full stretch just to make sure that it's going to hit the ground. As you see again, he's had to hit the ground a second time. But you see him steady himself, thinking, right, we're going to have to fly for this one. And there has been a call here. Hmm, not too sure. Injury Tucked stuff, back in. So Keys will restart play. 
not catching that all really. He's got the big backhand throw up looking for McKay. McKay's got two defenders to contend with. Miles Hinchy wins that front position and knocks it away. Where picks it up to go. Young. Quick movement. McManus, he's got a free one, free player in the middle. Takes the option, McCallum. Not many cuts happening towards, so he has to go wide. Finds Mc, It's almost unmarked at the moment. Yep, again. Crank, I think, are just happy to give up short range throws. They're just worried about the long shot. If you so give up all the short, that'll just work it through the middle, yeah. though. So McCallum took advantage of that, and he's too, too low. way too casual with that throw. I think he thought that was just easy pickings for Hingy. And Got Irish out here um, with a twingy shoulder by the looks of it. We'll just keep an eye on him and see what he does. Yeah, number 24 for yeah. Crank, one of their main handlers, so you might see him pitch a temp behind the, behind the disc just to play a reset roll. Keys. Can't get it to Ryan, so it has to settle for Ferguson. Ferguson heads wide. That's a great smart play, but McKay bounces out of his hands and Oscar Francis straight to Milo Hingy. And again, that's another heartbreaker for yeah. another heartbreaker, another quick conversion for Fishwick. The quick pick up and go. Put it in. Waste no time. And that would be that would be a directive um, from the coaching mm. that if uh, for the Fishwick coaching staff that if the turnover happens on the goal line and leave you with a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-two -on -two in the end zone, pick it, it up in. and go. Don't mm. don't wait for more defenders to get back there. You see, Hinge, he took off immediately, just said, yep. yep. So that's the plan, just to pick it up and go. It's working for them too. Yep. And yeah, good good field sense as well, just to keep that back, keep that foot down as he secured the catch. It's Philip Swanman for throw. Kept it in bounds, of course. The uh, catch counting from your first contact with the ground and on the line is out. Yes. It's important to remember that. <laughs> that means when you're resetting the disc when it's been out, you have to set your pivot foot up in field, in not field. on the line. Correct. So 11 8 to Fishwick. So this from Pool A, the open division pool that has five teams in it, so wins are especially crucial with the top three automatically through to quarterfinals. As my dad would say, you want to get ahead and stay ahead, yep. and you want to do it as soon as you can. Top three from this ball straight through to quarterfinals, while fourth and fifth will have to play repercharge games tomorrow to earn their berth. So There's a lot of spin on that, but it looks like it's landing out. Yep. Hitting the cameraman down there. <laughs> So landing out of bounds, so that's a free yardage. Jaden Ferguson, very happy to take that. It's much easier to start with the disc in the middle of the field. You've got a lot more lateral space to throw to. We're also setting up a horizontal play, which is one of my favourites, as my club would know. Straight into the middle with a look long. Gray. And big, huge hand block there from Yang. Swan collects the scraps. And another opportunity for another defensive break. We are. Franker really putting that Hudson's defense gone long. on. Look at this. Numbers underneath it. And Gray gets two hands to that one. He had that read. He knew it was going to fall yeah. short in the wind. And straight away, they've got a moving Ryan. They're already at halfway. Ferguson to Keys with lateral movement. They want options at the end zone, but no one's going there. Not much is coming towards them either. <laughs> Boost got to go over the, over the... McManus picking it up. Yeah, over the defender's arm, but just puts the disc into the ground. McManus to Hodson. Hodson, they're just out of reach. Just what a turnover at this point. We have a quick one. Booth. He's got grey one out deep, but I don't think they're going to shoot that one. I think they'll try and work it early. The wind will carry it. Great reel in there by James Nichols. Keys to Booth. They're really attacking that front corner, but Fishwick defense is too close to them. Ferguson dropped back to about 15 from goal. Nichols, Keys, got a clear shot of that corner, but no one's heading there. Oof, Great the inside shot. Yeah, He's found Booth. 
absolutely sliced through that defense there. Deserving of that assist stat. Beautiful work. We saw Weir there absolutely frustrated with himself for letting that one get through. Still within two points. So 11 9. That remaining touch, Daniel. Yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about Jono Keys. He's still a teenager, and you could see him pivot out and begin to throw that before Tim Booth had actually made the cut. The connection between those two, well established and, and very well practiced. There's a lot of reading body language to be done in this game. When you mm. see that pivot out and you know their favourite throws, you see the wind up and you think, oh, I know what's coming here. Yeah. Those connections play a great role too when you know how quick your receiver yeah. can run. And I think what Fishwick did, I think they overcommitted to this near sideline too much of the defence. They thought the throw was going to go right to the sideline. Uh, it just meant that space opened up for Keys just to take that straight bullet shot at Tim Booth. So 11 9. So we approach the 70 minute mark of the game. What a downwind point for Fishwick. The wind's not really playing a part in where these teams score today, which is a testament to how strong they are as players. Big deep pull, but Fishwick will take the cheap yards while they can. Helix Smith. No easy reset here. He's going to go, after, go upfield to someone. Trong just finds space as he does. Has two reset options. Has to find a third. Malcolm Gill providing him with the bailout. Much tighter defense from Crank here. They're really trying to prevent that small ball option here. De Hollander puts it up over the top to Trong, who snuck up field. Let's Francis go, heads back to Helig Smith. Not many cuts happening towards the disc. The mm. receiver's happy, happy to let the handlers gain the easy yards. Helig Smith. Fishwick are very much favoring the up the line dump cut. Yeah. Which is probably why they've been put in this just creep towards the sideline position. Yeah, five metres at a time. Strong. He wants to come back infield now, but not much is happening for him. He finally finds room through to Gill. Bounces it to Francis, who will immediately look to the high side again. Strong. Oh. And pops it up over to Heli Smith. Some miscommunication there by Crank in the end zone. Yep. A they... switch called and, and not completed. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get away with those in the end zone because mm. the margin for error is just so low that a cutter only needs one or two steps yep. free to be open, especially when the throw is just a short, quick one. So Fishwick did very well there just to move. Just you can see here in the replay the through shot yep. really opened up the field and spread everyone out. Yep. And the defenders just dragged almost complacently to the right, to the near side of the field mm. and Helix Smith just had to almost stroll for that goal. <laughs> but by Francis in again he had one look at that corner, just enough to let them know he was serious. And an easy assist there for Michael Tron. Right on the line that goal. 12-9. Yeah. Lead by three. Crank of Comfortable enough margin at this point. Mm, Crank have closed that gap a little yeah, bit before. Will they close it again? It'll close it and then take the lead. Yep. A lot of hands on hips. It's late in the day on day one and exhaustion really starts to set in at this point. The mental exhaustion. Mm. Being out in the sun of the wind for a full day. They've got a couple of tournaments under their belt. What? Hinky with the pull. Heaps of hang time on that. They're going to have early pressure, early defensive pressure on this. Sorry, Irish. Forming Ferguson. up the front. Yeah, they only got one pass out before. Oh, facing a sea of black jerseys. Up the smooth throw in the middle to Nichols. Ferguson, Keys. Keys has got a couple long. of long shots. Petrini Vans there, but he's Ooh. left it. The Capes called Hingy's it. in the middle. And Hingy's run through. Pulled Anthony, it out of the back pocket and hit go. Anthony Vran, he went to take that early, but I think he heard the call from his captain in the back saying, no, I've got this one. And Hingy's just said, right, okay, well, if you're not going to go to it, I am. And just swats Young it. picking up the disc, setting up on the corner. The back of the corner, yeah. Easy infield shot Hodson to Hodson. in the middle. That connection is strong. Let's go, Jakey, Jakey, Jakey! 
Young straight across to McCallum. He's got a backhand look, looking for Hodson. Hodson's going to have to work. Who's there to back him up? Swan's out there. Yeah, he and puts a nice, easy leading pass to Swan. That's a terrific throw because your heart rate's up having mm. done a 40-metre sprint to take the catch. Yeah. And to then put a smooth precision throw like that, real real work on the fine motor skills with a high heart rate. Yeah, the angle for that assist is quite challenging too because you want to put it out in front but not too too far that a defender will get in the way. And the uh, Daniel on the sideline there has got some observations. Yeah, I just want to come back to Mile Hingy. He's a great story. Uh, you can see his training grounds actually in the background of the shot. Some of those big mountains that surround <laughs> the field. He is well known for going for the odd run up the one or two of them. After a tournament, and you can see his recovery, just, just uh, the work rate of Hingy. Yep. It's really what his game is about. Just never giving up and being able to pull out a block that really he shouldn't have got. Maybe if we all climbed climbed Mount Ainsley after a tournament, we'd be a lot quicker. <laughs> so Crank have caught a time out here just to try and arrest the bleeding a little bit. There's, um, they can very quickly find this game's over before they know it. So Fishwick only need. Two more goals to close it out. Got the camera on that mountain there. Yeah. If you're ever visiting Canberra, I highly recommend. It's a beautiful walk. I personally wouldn't run it, but many people do. <laughs> of course, we see Crank's small roster there. That's all they've got available to them. Barely enough for two lines, so mm. you're playing every second point or you're playing two or three in a row. And the lactic acid buildup just slows you down enough doesn't slow you down by much, but at the national championships, just being one or two steps off the pace can be the difference. I've played on a lot of teams with some small rosters. Definitely relate. <laughs> can be done, though. You've got the determination and the grit. So we see the uh, Kronk team, the Crank B team, who are playing in the second division here, just up the road. And they've finished their day and have come to support their A team, which is great to see. It's a rarity that we get both divisions at the mm. same, playing in the same weekend, only minutes apart. So I really like it. It does mean I can't watch my, my, <laughs> my team play, but it's a great atmosphere to be a part of. Be a great post team dinner between yeah. Div One and Div Two teams. It's a fantastic atmosphere at these tournaments with. Club mates supporting each other. So we see John Horan there. He's, he is absolutely fastidious as a coach. Nothing is done in his mind until... It's not over the, uh, until it's over. Until the scores have been submitted to the officials. <laughs> <laughs> he will be in top gear the entire time. It looks like this defense is as well. Look at look at them. Early pressure right on that first pass. McManus on the mark. Irish oh, huge oh, layup there from McCallum. You could just really sense that coming from that rundown. Right in front of the camera. Yep, high Sandbridge energy taking up. it back in where it went out. I'll try and pop this in in a couple of throws here. McManus up the line. Great throw by Sandbridge. Look at that. Hingey's out the back corner. McManus, one of the veterans of this team, taking his time. Sandbridge finding Young. Young half a step from the end zone. He's thrown it to the advantage of who he thought was Hodson, but Hodson wasn't looking at him. A rare error from Fishwick. Irish wanted to get it upfield early. But Key said, no, no, we're going to play at our own pace. We're not going to let Fishwick dictate this game. Pantry ran. Great block there by Hodson. Very active marks by Fishwick at the moment. Yep, they really such. want it. Irish definitely wants that shot. He keeps winding up that forehand. Key's playing in tight. And uh, right, he's got to see Ryan there, and he had Young right on his shoulder. And the cut and the throw of the timing of those two wasn't yeah, quite lined up there. Highly, highly pressured throw, and probably not the greatest of choices, but had to get something going just to try and get them moving. Hodson, simple shot into Hingey, cutting towards the disc. Recess to Sandbridge. Sandbridge's going to look at that high side first. Back in field to Hodson. Quite a low throw, but picked it up. Yeah. Crank really forced them defensively to get to this side, so Fishwick's going to want to move to that other call. side. Yeah, it was a very awkward landing there Cramp by Sandbridge. Yep. So he's called the injury stoppage. 
Crank in for the support. How lovely. Yeah. That's one of the things I love most about Ultimate is everyone's really here for the support. Yeah. But uh, he has to take the sub, even though he, you know, he could theoretically be okay to keep going. So if you call the injury sub, and if it's not the result of a collision, you need to leave the field. So Trong's coming off for Sandbridge, and Crank also making a substitution with Labus coming on for Alex Pentony Brand. And another turn there. Crank with a shot here to keep the game alive. Ferguson, Whoa. huge bid there from Foreman. I believe that's Yang out there on oh, his Yang, toes. Oh, Yang, sorry, yeah. Lavis, the fresh legs. Can he get the moving? Ferguson. Lots of pressure up the front there. Pumps it across the Saved field. It. Great run down by McCabe. Ryan. Again, they're just patiently just working the disc, playing metres at a time. Lavis. There are lots of loopy throws. Yeah. There is starting to be more action happening downfield now they're getting closer to the end zone and Crank can sniff a, sniff a goal here. Ferguson. Nichols. Keys, oh, that's Labus that's oh. gone deep. Unguarded. Needs to go to it early and they've done it. Crank keep it alive. 13-10. And again, that was uh, like we saw before, the Fishwick defence really try and close to that high side of the field, close to the disc, and just tempt the crank players to throw over the top. And when teams get to that range, that about 25, mm. 25 metres to the end zone, that's that sweet spot of the throw being long, lofty enough to go over the top, but doesn't stay in the air long enough for the defence to run it down. Takes a lot of skill to get that throw out. Yeah. Weighted it perfectly, just straight to the lap. See how some crank players stretching down there. Just trying to keep some, keep the blood flow through the mm. legs. Just a few more minutes, they beg. Just a few more. They're playing very well for a small squad. Yeah. If we didn't mention it was a small squad, probably couldn't tell. 13-10. <laughs> The Fisherwick United playing out of Canberra. As so we start to enter the end game of this fourth game of the day, of day one of the Australian Ultimate Championships for 2021. 20 minutes to go. I don't think we'll get to time cap. I think we'll see a winner before then. Boost and that's going to drift out of bounds. <sighs> Which is not what you want. You need to be able to pin the defense, pin the offense back on their heels, but giving them a chance to just calmly walk it up. We haven't seen many pulls to the back of the end zone today. No, not in the later games. And Alex Smith realizes he has it. If he gets there and he's unguarded, he's got a free shot, but his stack doesn't respond to Hollander. It's a lot of movement upfield. Cranker really. They've recognised that Fishwick have these one-out cutters and so mm. put two defenders out in the lane. And it means that... Relying on that up-the-line dump cut again. It means that there has to be a bit of communication, a lot of work to do. Mitchell. Short up for Svartos. Morrison Jones doesn't get there, but pressures the next throw. Svartos wants an inside-out break, but doesn't get it. So does Helig Smith. It's a signal to their teammates saying, go that way, boys. That's where I want to throw it. Very tight defense from Crank upfield at the moment. Yep, in the red zone now to Hollander, who's got that free shot. And he's got easy just to Bill Foreman, who has to get there in his hands and knees to get that win in. But if that's what it takes, that's what you do. Lots of taps and high fives. Great camaraderie out there. 14 10 now. The advantage of Fishwick. Can see a big cross field throw from Helly Smith there. Popped Jack, it in by De Hollander. Jack Gray was that defender that just had to go with that fake from De Hollander. He just had to put some sort of pressure on him when he's trying to guard the goal line and he's got cutters on the side. You just have to have to put some sort of pressure on. It was a very powerful fake, I would have bid for that yeah. as well. Yeah. You can't risk it when you're that close. No, yeah. 
have to just put whatever pressure on you can and just buy your ex your teammates just even half a second more to get in position but a full second I think mm. would have been handy <laughs> for crank there yeah it's always a risk when you put yourself out on the ground how long is it going to take you to get back up yeah so fish we expect a very fast run down here this could be match point yeah they'll try and um They'll try and put pressure on even the first throw here. I'll be surprised if Crank are able to get one unguarded throw out here. Because Fishwick can definitely sense victory now. If they couldn't a couple of goals ago now, they definitely can. Hudson drops it. But <laughs> Apparently that doesn't count. That doesn't count. He's put that plenty can, of hang time, put it straight down the middle. That's, you can see that's the spin on it from here. Wowee, that's put him that's right back. That's what you want. I get that Callahan one pass country. out. They're deep in their own end zone. They've got a bit of work to do here, but I think they'll be patient enough just to keep taking those small, small ball options. Booth. And a foul. Draws a foul from McManus there. Who, Uncontested. Yeah. McManus playing tight defense there and just knew he had to cover. Knew he was going to have to cover that back end, but yeah, just a minor minor bump on the way through. And so play will restart from the zero stall count. Booth back to, to Keys. Got an easy chop, but he's put to it the out. Grass. This yep. could be it. Put Picked it up and moved it. Hingy. One meter from the end zone now, but. Heads wide. Great catch by Weir. Crank aren't letting them have it easily. Yep. No, a lot of stationary players in the end zone, but McManus. now Hengi's found it out. Yeah. Manus finds it easily. And that's the game. Well fought by both teams. And a pick call. Pick call. <laughs> I, was, I was about to start the wrap-up, Chantel, but I thought, hang on, something... Still no anyone's game. No one's celebrating. Why is that? This, this is why we have the rules. <laughs> So the disc is going to come back to Hingy. McManus will reset to where he was before that throw went up. Turnover or goal? It's hard to tell, hey. Almost a goal for sure. They'll probably McManus will probably just do the same cut again. Mm, Hingy doesn't have much of a mark either. No, nah, this time he fakes it out. Hingy is he pops jump it up it in? to Weir. Oof. Huge pit there from Labor's had to put pressure yeah. on. He's left his man unguarded as a result. And that's Tom McCallum. And this time. We've That's got the going. official hand signals from our game advisors. <laughs> and Lots fish, of handshakes. Fish week, take it out. 15-10. What a game. We're going to throw, throw down to Daniel Clinton, who's down there with Callum Sandbridge. Callum, mate, well done. Congratulations. Another win for you. Yeah, thanks. Going 2-0 on the first day is good for us. 2-0. So who did you beat this morning? I would beat Heads of State from Melbourne. That's right. You did say that you took it to the Hoss boys. Yeah. And now you've managed to beat a, a short crank line. Pretty brave fight by them. Yeah, they really came out firing. Um, they, I think they identified that they were a bit worn from their three games. And they really tried to slow down our offensive tempo. But when we got on a run on D, we really managed to just kind of push it through. And All right. Well, congratulations, mate. Good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thanks Thank so you for much. your time. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. That's going to wrap us up for day one. Be sure to join us again tomorrow where we're going to have another four... Cracking games of Ultimate. I'm looking forward to it. Nothing better, no better way to spend your Saturday than watching some of the best Ultimate we have in the country. So thanks for joining us here on KO Sports. Your KO freebie for the weekend. Woohoo! Three more days of action. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.